with us on Eclipse Weekend. There's a lot going on, and uh, we picked these songs uh, about a month ago, and I'm amazed at the way God, I believe, is going to move today um, in, the, in the words of these songs and the truths of these texts that we're going to sing together. So, again, I'm very glad that you're here with us. All of you online, we're so glad that you're with us as well. Would you stand with us together, please? Let's sing this song together, please.
still risen. He's still alive and he reigns forevermore. Let's pray together. Oh Lord Jesus, we come into this space knowing that you are here in our hearts. You are here because your spirit is alive in us. And we thank you for this hope, this promise. We know that no matter what comes our way, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is alive, alive in us and that we can stamp out any earthly enemy because of your power, your might. For greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And we celebrate that reality today. No matter what is attacking, we give ourselves to that end. Thank you for that promise and that hope because there are people here today, Lord, that have come needing your help, needing your touch. We need healing. We need comfort, we need direction, and we're asking for you to provide it all through your word and your spirit in this moment. So Lord, hear us, each one of us, and we pray that as you dig deep into our hearts, you would find us faithful. And in finding us faithful, we pray that you would honor us as we honor you. To your name be glory and power and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You can be seated. Would you sing this with us, please?
from him and exists by his power and his intended for glory. All glory to him forever. Amen. Would you sing this last song with us, please? Lift it up. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation.
his name. Amen. Amen. Can we just sing that chorus one more time? I know we're supposed to be done, but let's just do one more. What do you say? Come on. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. recognizing your power and your strength in our lives. God, we recognize your sovereignty and your message. And God, may we learn to follow you more fully. And we recognize your plan in our lives and recognize that every bump in the road, every issue, you can use for, our, for your glory and our good, as it says in the book of James. So God, we move on from here as a church and we thank you and praise you for the way you're blessing us with growth and people and all these things and people following you. And God, from here, we recognize your power within us and we give you all the credit for anything that happens from here on out and what has happened at the beginning of history till now. God, may you be praised and may you be lifted up. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Be seated, please. I was knee deep in my failures. But now the waters of change wash over my head. I do this because I know who I am. I do this because I'm forgiven. I do this because he rose. I know no water can change me, but this water is a sign that change has occurred in my heart. My life will never be the same. So now I'm proclaiming it to the world. And just as Jesus was buried, I will be buried. Just as Jesus rose, I will rise. Faith, hope, love, none are greater than these. I have faith that Jesus is who he says he is. I have hope in his resurrection and his everlasting power. His endless love has forever changed my life. Quite a few years ago, I took a group of college-age people to the far east of Russia and uh, the capital there, Khabarovsk. And there are 11 universities in Khabarovsk, Russia. And so it's a, a fertile ground of people to reach young college students. And when we went there, each of us had our own interpreter. Uh, one of the young ladies in the church that was sponsoring the event, the camp we were doing, um, was in linguistics and was an English interpreter. And so she got a, a, a bunch of students that are with her to come so that we could all be paired up with someone. And that way we could have conversations all day long with whoever that we wanted to talk to. They would just translate for us. Well, the beauty of that is then when, I, when they would translate for me and I'm, I'm preaching the gospel, uh, they're not just hearing it, they're actually saying it speaking the gospel and four of those interpreters became christians that weekend um, through that experience and it was great because we went to the amur river uh, which is the river between china and russia and went out into that river and baptized four of those 
of those ladies. Uh, it was great, and actually one of them, Nadia, still comes sometimes to our global prayer experience on Tuesday night when we do that on Zoom. It, it, it's such an exciting, honestly, baptisms are one of the most exciting things for me, I think, in, in ministry. And uh, you might ask yourself why. I mean, there are a lot of exciting things that, that, happen, in min that happen in ministry, but I want to point it out to you today. I want to dial in on this subject of, of what it means to know baptism, be baptized, what it's all about. So if you have your Bibles or a device with the Bible on it, I want to take you to Matthew chapter 3 today. And, it, and you may remember the theme for this year is what he said, big things Jesus wants you to know. And we're going to start a series today on, on what it means to be serious with God what he said about being serious with God. And we're going to start with this topic of baptism. Now, for those of you who have already experienced this, I'm hoping that this ride will take you down memory lane and you'll just remember it and enjoy it and thank God for it. But those of you who haven't been baptized yet, I want to show you why that's a big deal to Jesus and therefore it's a big deal to all of us. There are so many different views of what the Christian faith means to our daily life. Uh, one thing the Bible clearly shows us is that we need to be serious about our relationship with God. And while we like to emphasize that Jesus is indeed our friend, he called us friend. A lot of times because he emphasizes that personal relationship, we can diminish who he is and his authority in our life. You know, me and Jesus on the Jericho Road were just bros. No, no. He, we sang about it. He reigns. You know, he is to be worshipped and praised. And therefore, what he says actually matters to your life. And it'll give you the best life that he designed for you. And Jesus has a lot to say about that seriousness from the beginning, really, of the Bible as we see God himself speaking to us and then into the New Testament as Jesus came to the world and spoke it. So today, I want to unpack a little bit about what he had to say and what he did relative to baptism. Now, it's amazing as we think about last weekend, and that was a record for us of the number of people who came to worship uh, by far. And it was exciting to see people celebrating that and people putting their faith in Christ for the forgiveness of their sins because they believed in the resurrection. And today represents what should be, what can be, a first step for someone who is following Christ. But perhaps you've been someone who's been following Christ for years, but you've never taken this first step. You've taken a lot of other steps, but let me take you along as to why. Here, let, let me just give you some background before we dive into our text. The child Jesus, born on Christmas and taken then escaping into Egypt, has now come with his family back to Nazareth. And, and Matthew gives us that story. And then all of a sudden, bang, it's 30 years later. He fast forwards us to this moment. And he, J John the Baptist is out in the Jordan River baptizing people. That's why they call him John the Baptist, by the way. I don't know if you needed help with that. So he says that one is coming who will baptize people, not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. And here's what happens, Matthew chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said, so why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. And so John agreed to baptize him, and after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. Now look, John the Baptist fully understood who Jesus was in this moment. I mean, standing 
face to face with the Messiah, this man admits his own need for repentance. You should be baptizing me, he said to Jesus. Well, he's also standing before someone who doesn't need repentance. He doesn't need this moment. But as a full human, Jesus set the example for baptism. Now, it's important for all of us to grasp this, not just for what he said, but for what he did in this moment. He said it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. If you look in the New American Standard Bible, which is this real literal uh, Greek to English translation, he says, but Jesus answering said to him, allow it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, this needs to happen. This is the design of God, and this is right before God, all righteousness. So with his own baptism, Jesus demonstrates for us how important baptism is for the person who is serious about living in a relationship with God. It's pretty exciting, actually. Now, remember, this is the Son of God himself embodied in human flesh, declaring this act of obedience is something that God, his words, requires, or something that fulfills all the righteousness of God. This is why he himself was baptized, not because he needed it, but to set an example for all who have believed and have repented to become his follower. Now, look, some might say, you know what? This event wasn't meant for all of us. This event was simply an event where Jesus now is being ushered in to his public ministry. You know, he hasn't been out there in public yet telling people about God, and this moment is just his entrance into that. Well, it's interesting when we think about that, because John the Baptist has been baptizing people who repented of sin up to this point. It's not just about Jesus. It's about all people that were being baptized. And he called on everyone to repent and be baptized. Now, since Jesus himself had not sinned and didn't need to repent, there had to be another reason for his purpose. He was showing all humanity that a public declaration of faith was the fulfillment of God's plan. When you put your faith in Jesus, repent of your sins, this is your declaration to the world that your whole way of looking at life has changed. More on that a little bit later. This is why Jesus is an example for all of us. In Matthew and Mark's account of John's baptism of Jesus, he says the Spirit descended upon him like a dove and all of this was recorded in the gospel writers. But Luke 7 indicates, listen, that John the Baptist continued to baptize people even after Jesus' baptism. So what he said, that baptism is what God requires and is the fulfillment of all righteousness, wasn't just for him. It was for everyone who would repent and believe. You know, I, I think back to it for myself in my baptism, I was baptized at a little church camp in Butler, Ohio, in a big giant pond they had there that we swam in every afternoon. But when young people would put their faith in Christ, they offered them the opportunity to be baptized in this big pond. Now, I was baptized as an infant. I was brought up in that kind of tradition. And so I, I, I went and called my mother because they had been explaining to us that Jesus had set this example for all of us to follow, that when we repent and believe, we are baptized to show the world. And so I said to my mom on the phone, Mom, it's not that I don't respect how I was brought up, and I know that I can just confirm my baptism to the whole world by, my, my, by going through confirmation class and standing before the church, which I did, but I really want to make this decision on my own so that everyone in the world knows this is me deciding this. And so my mom said, sure, absolutely, you can do that. 
And it's as if it happened this morning. I remember every minute of it. It was a beautiful time where I was saying in that moment of baptism, this is where my life is going to go. Following Jesus' example. You see, in every area of life, am I seeking to live out Jesus' example? Am I seeking to be a representative of him and showing the world that following him is exactly what he has designed for us to do? But you know what? His example isn't the only reason we know baptism is for all who want to seriously follow him. He also commissioned his disciples to baptize. Uh, fast forward to Matthew 28, a passage of scripture that we often read here relative to missions and personally telling our story. And here's what Jesus said in verse 19 of Matthew 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. You see, Jesus taught his followers to baptize new followers. And by the way, we would be in that lineage. Those of us who are here today following Jesus, we would be in that line of people who were believers and were taught to do what the believers before us had been taught. Now, often we reference this commission when we're talking about spreading the gospel and telling others, and we should. That's why he said it. But sometimes we gloss over the, um, this important part of the commission, not only making disciples, but he said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We should not underestimate that this commission includes the, that reality for the first followers of Jesus who would ultimately become the leaders of the church. Baptism was clearly part of following. Baptism was clearly part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus' example and his commission call us to it as well. Teach these new disciples to obey, here it is, all. I think just about every song we sang this morning had the word all in it. All the commands I have given you. This would include baptizing new believers. This would include being baptized so that you are baptized in his name and live for his glory. Now, some would say, you know, Pastor Steve, appreciate you reading a few verses to us, but I know some verses, and I know that verse, we are saved by faith through grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. And, and it's interesting, so because of that, they might diminish the importance of baptism, reducing it to a mere work of righteousness. Well, it's not according to what he said, what Jesus said, instructing his disciples to not only baptize others themselves, but teach them to carry on that sacrament in the lives of new believers that trust in him. It's an equal part of the commission. Make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, if we're serious about following Jesus, we take seriously all his commands. Are you picking up on a theme here? All of his leadership, all of his direction. You know, when I was a youth pastor, it was interesting because uh, just like me as a teenager who made that decision and called my mother for, for, for permission to allow me to do this, uh, we had teenagers in our student ministry that wanted so much to follow Jesus, but their unbelieving parents did not want them to be baptized. And so they were in a dilemma. You know, they wanted to respect and honor their parents, but at the same, in the same way, they wanted to be baptized as a public profession of their faith. And so, of course, they do what every student does. They come ask their youth pastor. And, and I would often talk to them about the thief on the cross. Because in that moment, he did everything he knew to believe. 
everything he knew to say to Jesus, I get it now, I know who you are, please, I pray that today you would remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus promised him, without a baptism, today you will be with me in paradise. And so I said to those students, and I made sure they understand, the Lord knows the desire of your heart. He knows exactly what's going on, and you're more than willing to follow him in this command. And so when that opportunity comes for you, where you can make that decision on your own, absolutely do it. You know what was interesting about it? How many of those students who shared with their parents, okay, I'm absolutely going to respect you and your wishes, but because of the life they began to live of respect and honoring their parents, their parents came to believe. And their parents encouraged them to be baptized. They saw the transformation that was taking place in their kids' lives. And it's interesting when we think about how some would seize, I mean, couldn't wait. Some, for, some of them, it was like 18th birthday, I want baptized. You know, it's whatever I'm emancipated, I want baptized. You know, the whole idea is that in my heart, that's my desire, and the Lord knows I will do it when I'm able to do it. See, the physical act of baptism isn't your salvation. Let's be clear about that. The desire to honor the Lord by obediently following his example and his command by faith is, is now your salvation. That's an action that you take in following him. And whether you publicly confirm your baptism as an infant or child or decide to take the plunge on your own, you make your profession of faith so that the world knows Christ is all for you. All. Now, again, not minimizing its importance, but rather defining its importance in this moment. See, here's an example of this in the Bible. If you go to Acts chapter 2, um, this was an amazing encounter where the Spirit of God filled the hearts of all of the followers of Jesus, and they went out into the street, and they began to talk to people in their own language, or they were hearing it, in their own language, the gospel about Jesus' resurrection from the dead, how he had died on the cross for their sins. They called them to repentance, and they said, because he's raised, you can believe. And 3,000 people believed. Now, now look, look what happened. Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 36. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. And Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Now listen, men and women, baptism was the first response from the very beginning for those who were putting their faith in him and would follow him. From the start, Jesus' disciples made baptism the first thing a person did when they put their faith in Jesus. Now, that means we need to fully understand what baptism is for. Uh, the English word repent is a translation of the Greek language. And the Greek language that we translate repent is one word, Meta, meaning change, metamorphosis, and noia, meaning your mind, to change your mind. So metanoia is the word that we translate into English, repent. Now, sometimes this word repent gets this bad rap like some preacher up on a platform waving his long bony finger and being condemning to everyone, and you need to repent. When in the end, it's just simply realizing that Jesus is, in fact, who he said he was, that you, in fact, are who he said you were, and it's time to change your mind about what's important to you, and you're following him. Meta, noia, repent. Now, this is what Peter called people to do in response to discovering that Jesus Christ was indeed the Messiah and had risen from the dead. 
was crucified for their sins, buried, and then triumphantly was raised. We celebrated that with great joy last weekend. Well, when a person changed their mind, they left their past beliefs or their past religion to seriously, here it is, seriously pursue Christ. And as a way to publicly declare this metanoia, baptism was the first act of obedience. Now, when the question was asked by the people as they heard Peter preach, what should we do? Peter put two actions together, metanoia and baptizo. Repent and be baptized. This is it. This is your response to what has happened now in your mind and in your heart because you have believed. It was an immediate response to their faith. And if you'd read down a few verses further in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Every preacher's dream. <laughs> about 3,000 in all. You know, it's interesting how it was an immediate response, and, and, and Peter must have been given some amazing insight into the honesty and the truth of what was going on in the hearts of those that they baptized. Um, it's interesting because if you go to China today and you talk to the Christian leaders there that are part of the underground church where true believers gather to study God's word and to worship him and come and find out about his glorious salvation, Chinese Christian leaders will not immediately baptize someone when they put their faith in Christ. They want to see that true repentance has taken place in their life. And so sometimes that's one, two years where a person is saying, I want to be baptized, and they're saying, well, let's see if you really do want to change your mind about the previous life, because you know what? There's going to be a lot of challenge. A lot of challenge in the decision you're making to follow him. And so they wait to see the sincerity in the heart of the followers. Well, either way, right after, as the leaders are watching your heart and you show that you are ready for this, baptism tells the world that you are now fully devoted to following Jesus. You are serious about your relationship with God. Now, I think it's important, if I'm going to stand up here and pontificate about baptism, that you should be clear about what those symbols are in baptism. Really, I, I think there are five. Five symbols in the whole baptism experience. The first, of course, is what we started with. Your desire to identify with Jesus Christ. You see his example, and therefore you want to follow that example. The second is to testify to your need of cleansing. It's saying, I confess that I've in fact sinned against God and I need this cleansing from God in my life. And then third, it's the water itself then. We think of water not only for us to drink, but as something to wash us. And so the water itself represents the cleansing that takes place when we repent of our sins and follow Christ. Then immersed in the water, it's as if our sins are buried in the grave with Jesus. And there they die with Jesus in the grave. And then finally, coming up out of the water, our resurrection from death to life. I, I get fired up just talking about this. And I hope as you think of your own baptism, you're saying to yourself, that's exactly what I want for my life. And I'm not saying you've lived a perfect life since the day you were baptized. Maybe you have your own things that you still need to repent of now, but I'm here to tell you, your baptism represents this opportunity to be forgiven and transformed through the blood and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is our hope. Now, uh, some have asked me, uh, can I still make it to heaven if I'm not baptized? And of course, I have all the answers. <laughs> well, 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 I say to them, you know, look, uh, the Lord is your final judge. 
not me. All I can do is show you and tell you what he said. And it's clear to me he has called us to baptism. And I wouldn't want to stand before the Lord having ignored or rejected one of his commands. I I would never want to do that. And so when you think about it, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So why would you not want to follow his direction and his example into baptism? Rather than being motivated by fear, though, why not be motivated by your serious desire to worship and glorify the Lord with your baptism? Now, I've heard many reasons as to why people won't get baptized who want to be followers. They say everything from, I don't need to be baptized to be saved, to I just don't want to get my hair wet in front of people. No kidding. No kidding. And, and, and all, every, you imagine it, it's been said. It's been an excuse. When you think of who he is and what he did for you and what he's calling you to, I pray you'll respond today uh, by letting us know that you want to be baptized. Because I promise you, you'll never be so beautiful as when you come up out of the baptistry. Never will you be more beautiful than that. I mean, why wouldn't you want to honor the Lord you love by always striving to do what he has called you to do? So today... Uh, For those of you who haven't been baptized, you you got a connect card when you came in. I hope you did. And there are pens right on your chair because I want to make this as easy as possible. But, I mean, fill that connect card out with your name and contact information. And there's a little place on a little box to check that says, I want to be baptized. Because we'd love to follow up with you and talk about this with you so that you can participate in the next baptism service, which will probably be soon if a lot of you sign up. <laughs> We'd love that. We'd love for it to take so long out there in the hub that you get no donut that day. <laughs> if you would say, I want to declare to the world, I have repented and I'm following him. And for those of you who've been baptized, this is a great day today for you to not only remember it, but once again, in your heart, affirm that as your declaration to the world. Jesus is who I want to follow. Jesus is who I trust for my eternity. I am his in all things. And I tell you this today for no other reason then that's what he said. And it's a big thing he wants you to know. Let's pray together. Lord, I want to always take your example and command seriously. I mean, I know you love me, and I know you've sacrificed so much for me, and that's what I want the world to know through my life, that I believe this. I've received your grace and mercy, and I want to proclaim it. And so, Lord, I ask you today to help men and women in this space to want nothing more than to follow your commands because you can be trusted. I pray that you would give each one courage and whatever the reasons for putting it off are, that those will melt into a memory and that this moment will be a moment you help people to respond. So help people to pray in response to what they've heard. Maybe someone today, Lord, needs to be forgiven and needs to welcome you into their life. Help them to do that, even now. Go ahead. You you respond to what you've heard today. Pray your own prayer, thanking Jesus for what he's done and calling out to yourself to follow what he has demonstrated and said. You pray. gift, Jesus. So great a salvation to know our sins are forgiven. You've no longer remember them. They are under the blood of Christ. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for 
the opportunity to know peace in our hearts that we forever can live with you in glory. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's stand and let this song be your response to what you heard this morning. Let us know you want to be baptized. You can just leave it on your seat or you can put it in an offering box. Those of you who are with us online, listen to this. Last week, one of the people who live in Chicago, watch us online, came down here and was baptized. And so you can make that decision too. You can just put that in the chat that you're interested in that. Overall, just let us know and we'll make sure you're part of that as this is falling off my head. I, I, also, online, stick around for just a minute. Ben's going to talk a little bit more about how you can respond to all that you experienced today in worship. God bless you. So glad you're here. We look forward to seeing you back here in person soon.